So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to introduce um, Mr. Alan Mikalev, who's head of Co consumer finance, and he's going to be giving a presentation for um, that um, addresses BOV personal energy loan. Okay, the, pers the, the purpose of this presentation is to um, demonstrate the benefits to borrowers and other stakeholders to go through the terms and conditions of this uh, energy loan product, which are BOV are, um, I think, just recently launched. And what, what would be the eligible products, investments, which um, consumers, which um, individuals can um, utilize this loan for. And I wish that you have an interesting um, presentation. Towards the end of the presentation, we will have also time for some questions, um, which I think could clarify certain points which are raised during the presentation. And uh, with this, I would like to hand over to Mr. Alan Mikalev. Okay, so I would like to share the screen first. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, on behalf of Bank of Aletta, uh, welcome for this uh, presentation. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to give an overview of the new product that Bank of Valletta has just uh, recently launched, uh, the BOV Personal Energy Loan. Um, uh, this uh, loan is uh, made uh, uh, in collaboration with the European Investment Fund, EIF, uh, whereby the bank uh, is launching a, a personal energy loan to assist personal customers to finance energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, project at their households. So the product is uh, particular and specifically intended for individuals uh, to carry out investments of uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy at uh, their residency. Uh, may, maybe it's their primary residence or maybe their summer residence. Um, the underlying objective of this facility is to support these uh, personal customers to have uh, readily available access to these uh, investments that they can carry out by making uh, the financing of such uh, investments much more accessible and also affordable, offering a number of investments, oh, uh, offering a number of uh, benefits. What are the benefits for the customer? Basically, through this loan, um, no collateral or security is required from customer. As you well know, there will be instances where the bank would require some form of collateral in order to grant a lending. But for this particular product, the bank has uh, waived this requirement so as to make it more easy for most of customers to, to be able to apply for this uh, product. Again, another benefit would be the, that the customer is not expected to provide any contribution. That is, uh, a full finance of the investment can be obtained from the bank through this loan. Um, and so this, again, makes it easier for the customer because usually we uh, ask for a, a contribution of 10, 20 or 30 percent, even for, for hormones or such products. Uh, in this case, this is being waived also. To, to carry out the, the application, there will be no processing fees, so uh, customers won't pay any fees at all at, at the outset of the uh, application of the loan. And even if the loan is, is eventually uh, settled prior to its uh, maturity or the expected term of the loan, um, the bank will not charge any other fees uh, because the, the customer decided to settle the loan earlier. So that's another benefit. One of the primary benefits of the, the uh, personal energy loan is the low interest rate of 2.5. Uh, as you might uh, know, even for home loan, the, the rate is, is higher. So this is uh, one of the best rates that one can find for any type of product in the local market. And uh, this is a, a, a big benefit that will uh, instigate more customers to, to apply for this product and hence to carry out such investments in, in these products. And so the, the loan will be 2.5% for the duration of the loan. 
this means that uh, we are charging just a small margin of 0.05% over the consumer lending base rate um, for a final variable rate of 2.5%. Uh, furthermore, the, the interest rates uh, is subsidized for the first three years by a whole 2%. So uh, actually for the first three years of the term of the loan, the customer will only pay the difference, that is 0.5% on the uh, balance of the loan. From uh, after the third year onwards, the customer will, will continue to pay the uh, interest of 2.5%. So this is a, a great benefit. The rate is uh, already discounted to 2.5 and there is the additional subsidy for three whole years of uh, another 2%, which is uh, removed from the equation for the customer. So from an interest perspective, it will be uh, quite attractive for customers. Another important um, benefit under this product is that the long terms, as opposed to what we're used to for other unsecured personal loans, is being extended uh, quite substantially, up to 15 years. Um, Usually we have we go to five seven years mostly, uh, but in this product we have uh, doubled that uh, maximum term, uh, which would mean that uh, the customer will have uh, more uh, feasible repayments. The, the, so the re the monthly repayments will be reduced, and it will encourage customers to either take a, a bigger loan or else they will be more easy on on repayments. The maximum term of 15 years obviously is subject to the loan amount. So if the loan value is relatively small, one, two thousand, three thousand, we, we don't usually go to 15 years because it doesn't make sense. But for the larger amounts, um, the 15 years uh, capping um, can, can be uh, uh, obtained by, by, by the customer. Another limitation for the maximum term of 15 years will be uh, what is the customer's age, obviously. So if customer is 30 years and he wants a 15 year loan, that's okay, that's no problem. But if customer is, for example, 50 years of age, or 55 years, sorry, um, uh, and his retirement age is within 10 years, the maximum term cannot exceed the retirement age of the individual because he's expected to work after retirement age and that is the time we'll allocate for the maximum term in that particular case. Uh, what are the benefits for the uh, the retailers and or the importers? Um, basically, given uh, the, the benefits and the substantial benefits available for customers under the personal loan product, it, it makes it more affordable for uh, the customers to and uh, the the funds are the finance is much more accessible. So we estimate that more customers are expected to carry out such investments in energy efficient and renewable energy products, resulting in obviously increased sales for, for retailers and, and the importers. So the, the, the benefits around the product will encourage more, more to participate in this kind of uh, market and in these kind of investments. Uh, similarly, due to the uh, um, benefits available for the customers, the value of the actual products and the investments which is which will be carried out by the customers should be on the increase so if for example uh, now customer can afford uh, a pv installation of six panels they can um, carry out a, a larger install uh, installation of 10 or 12 panels for example because the long term is longer the interest rate is reduced and uh, there are the subsidy on on the interest rate so this will encourage him to, to invest even more in such uh, products. Um, another important benefit for the retailers, they can still obtain um, deposits from, from the customer as a, like a deposit to, uh, prior to affecting the order and so on. Uh, but obviously there's some limitation because of the EIF uh, regulations on this. Um, so, Actually, the deposits have to be carried out after the customer has obtained the financing under this product. 
these uh, benefits, both for the customer and eventually for the retailer, uh, are derived from uh, the establishment of a fund of funds, the ERE Malta Fund, it's called, which is co-financed by the Republic of Malta and the European Union under the uh, European Regional Development Fund, ERDF, uh, through an operational agreement which has been signed a few weeks ago by the bank and uh, the European Investment Fund. Uh, the letter will provide an interest rate subsidy of 2%, as we mentioned. This will be paid by EIF during the first three years of, of the loan, uh, from the disbursement of, of, the, of the loan. Plus, the EIF will provide some sort of uh, guarantee for, for the bank so that it will be able to leverage the bank finance to eligible customers and also has, has helped the bank to allow a, a discounted interest rate and uh, more benefits like no fees and longer term uh, to be uh, provided to the customer. Uh, let's have a look now at the uh, some eligibility criteria uh, as regards to the customer. Who, who, what type of customer is, uh, can apply? We already mentioned that it has to be an individual customer and uh, he has to be working in Malta and having taxable income derived from Malta. So, uh, most probably he would be a multi-citizen residing in Malta, working in Malta and paying tax in Malta. There are obviously, because of the EU regulations, uh, we must also include in, in this cohort also other EU members and e EEA uh, member state um, uh, individuals who have obtained permanent residence in Malta or living in Malta, and even third country nationals who have been granted long-term residency status in Malta. So as long as they have obtained uh, residency long-term in Malta or, or living in Malta like all Maltese residents and they are working locally and paying the tax locally, they, they will be eligible customers. Obviously, uh, besides this uh, uh, criteria, there are also the usual criteria uh, of, of the banks. So uh, normal bank lending criteria and the credit policy conditions are, are still to be met. So if customer is, uh, does not have sufficient income to, to sustain the loan repayments, obviously he, does, he cannot, uh, he's not eligible for the loan. Or if that particular customer has a bad credit history with local institutions, uh, he cannot apply because uh, it, it will be a non-starter because of his uh, bad uh, history. Other criteria which, which are established by the IAF uh, that limit the, the type of transactions that go through these loans, so why the, the, this loan can be used for, what, what purpose can, it can be used for. Um, are, these are some loan transaction criteria that we must follow. First of all, um, the uh, loan disbursement, the, the loan uh, drawdowns cannot relate to purchases. Uh, or, or services already completed prior to loan application stage. So uh, this has have to be future um, in, in investment. So the customer has to apply for the loan, obtain the lending, and then the work is carried out and eventually the drawdown is affected. Similarly, uh, the, the loan transactions must not relate to payments already made by customer to retailer. So something in the past. And also, it, it cannot uh, relate to payments to finance any existing loan. So if a customer has, has uh, uh, took out a, a loan, a personal loan, an eco loan, it would be OV or another institution six months ago to effect an investment in, the, in energy efficient uh, product, for example, he cannot now refinance that, uh, that loan through this new product because it has been already carried out the investment in the past and the DA, EIF does not allow that kind of uh, moving around with, with, uh, with loans in order to benefit from EU funds, obviously. Another um, limitation is that uh, the loan transaction must not relate to any portion of the purchase price which the customer will obtain from a sort of grant from the government of Malta or from any other EU entity. As you might might know, for example, in the case of PV uh, panels, for example, 
there is the um, grant of, of 3,000 euros. That um, portion of the grant cannot be financed by this product because otherwise it would be double, double uh, financing from EU funds. And uh, obviously the, the EU does not allow that. So in such cases, instead of uh, not uh, financing anything in, in these cases, we would be financing. The difference between the total investment amount, so let's say if the PV system is uh, 10,000 10, euros in total as a cost, and the customer will obtain a grant of 3,000, that uh, the, the, the bank finance throughout through this product will, will be for the uh, difference between 10 and, and 3,000 of the grant. So it will be, we will finance 7,000 at, at max. Uh, obviously, the, the quotation has to be reflect, to reflect this, uh, that the investment is for 10,000, there is the grant of 3,000 and the remaining amount of 7,000 that will be financed through the loan. Um, loan transactions must be against invoices dated after sanction letter. This is uh, similar to, to above. So any, anything uh, that has to be financed through this loan has to be future. After the loan application and the sanction letter has been provided to our customer. Another important uh, aspect of, of the loan and the limitation is that only uh, loan purposes that are predefined by the EIF, and we'll go through this list uh, la later on. These are mentioned like under the header of standardized measures. Um, uh, only these kind of purposes can be included under this uh, type of loan. So anything else um, cannot be financed by this product, but obviously the bank may consider other products like the normal personal loan or the eco loan um, uh, for other purposes not stipulated in the standardized measures as uh, listed by the EIF. Obviously, the, the uh, loan disbursements have to be in line with the sanction letter that the bank uh, uh, gives out. And uh, also there is uh, the uh, final limitation that all drawdowns might, must be carried out under this product by the end of December 2003. So the EIF has established that uh, the last date that any disbursements from loans uh, or, uh, for, from this product can only be affected by, by the 31st December 2003. So this gives us uh, three years uh, in which time loans can be taken out, uh, investment carried out, and, and disbursement issued uh, to pay those uh, investments. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the customer taking out a, a personal loan a uh, personal energy loan this week, for example, he will not be allowed to, to draw on down up to 203, but there are visual limitations that, that within the first six months, uh, the investment is carried out and paid and the, the loan is utilized by six months. Uh, if there is some need that the project for some uh, thing or other has delayed a bit and the customer needs uh, to extend those six months by which to affect the, the loan uh, drawdown. Um, the, the customer can apply to the bank and usually we, we grant uh, another small extension of say two months uh, to give the uh, customer the chance to utilize the loan uh, once the investment has been carried out. But uh, the 2023 uh, capping is also uh, because any loans, for example, that are uh, sanctioned in say November 2023, they will all ha only have say two months time you know, in, in which time they, they can withdraw from the loan. So that, that's why the capping of uh, the December 2023 date. Okay, so uh, now we'll go a bit through the, what the uh, terms and conditions of the, loan, the personal energy loan facility uh, are. Uh, this mostly interests the, the customer, but uh, as, as retailers, you might be well uh, good to know what, what these uh, uh, basic terms and conditions are, so that if the customer asks a question you can answer, it will be good and it will help you in, in the selling process uh, yourself. And also to show them that it's a relatively simple process to, to follow. 
as regard to the purpose, we already said that uh, it, it will be to finance the, the purchase of uh, purchase of products or services that generate energy efficiency or renewable energy subject to the standardized list uh, of, of measures, which we will we'll go through um, later on in a couple of slides. The maximum loan amount is, has been established as 50,000. Obviously, it depends on uh, how how customer can pay that loan. So 50,000 is, is the capping. If a customer has a low income, he will obviously benefit from lower amount of loan as, as is normal um, criteria. So, but uh, the, the maximum that can be taken under this product with all these benefits will be 50,000. And the loan has to be in, in, in euro. We mentioned already about the contribution that this is not mandatory, so full finance can be provided. The only exception being in case where the uh, the uh, customer is uh, taking out the, the grant from from EU or government funds. The uh, interest rates, or as you mentioned, this it will be throughout the loan of two point five percent, but during the first three years, the customer will only pay 0.05%, half percent interest rate during the first three years, and then uh, thereafter, it will pay 2.5% for the full duration of the loan. As regards to fees, no processing fees uh, will be uh, levied at, at, uh, when, when the uh, personal loan is uh, sanctioned and even no early repayment fees if the customer decides to settle the loan prior to the agreed term of, of the loan. Uh, there is a small commitment fee of 0.25% per annum after two months if the loan is not uh, withdrawn, uh, disbursed by the customer within two months. This is a standard fee that the bank uh, levies. It is a, a petty fee, especially for smaller amounts. Of, of loans, but uh, it is there more to as disincentive uh, for the customer so that they uh, speedily carry out their investments that they need to carry out and, and they settle the retailer as soon as possible so that no uh, unutilized funds are at the bank. Uh, they're waiting for the customer and he, he doesn't care when he withdraws or not. So, so this is uh, just to make it uh, to instigate the customer to uh, go ahead with what he has uh, uh, planned to create the investment, to settle the, the payment to the retailer within a, a relatively short period of time. The term of the loan, as already stated, is a maximum of 15 years, uh, and it is relative to the loan amount and to customer's retirement age, as already explained. The loan repayments will be monthly, covering the capital and interest, Obviously, during the first three years, the subsidy, the, the first three years where there will be the subsidy interest period, the element of interest that will be paid by customer will be just 0.5%, given that the remaining 2% is settled uh, directly by the EIF. As security collateral, uh, the, the bank um, cannot request any collateral from customer. In fact, this is a limitation imposed on, on us by the EIF so as to, to make the uh, uh, type of loan more accessible to more people. As regards to disbursements, uh, these are to be affected uh, by the bank directly to uh, the retailer, service provider, against the provision of uh, formal invoice um, by the retailer, through the customer, obviously. And no disbursements are allowed uh, beyond uh, the 31st December 2023. As uh, regards to documentation, um, we go through a bit the, the quotation and invoice, which, which relates a bit, uh, obviously, to, to, to the retailers because they have to provide these two documents. These are very important documents that are uh, required for the loan application stage, and eventually even for audit purposes of the EIF, because here we have EU funds involved, and obviously they, they do check and carry out their audits regularly, as, as you might know from other uh, schemes uh, that, that you have uh, benefits from in the past. 
and uh, so so the documentation is very important to be up to scratch and uh, to include full details as much as possible. Basically, the quotation that uh, is to be provided by the retailer to customer prior to loan application stage should include the, the obvious uh, things that it should be on the letterhead and include full name and address of the retailer. And it should also include the, the specifications and typical energy generation or any savings of the investment being made by customers. So if it is uh, PV panels, for example, the number of units involved, uh, the output that is should be generated um, from, from the system, and the benefits involved. Uh, for example, if it is uh, glazing the number of uh, windows or doors that are involved, the, for the, the square meterage of, of, of the, and the benefits one would expect from such investment, and, and so on. Uh, the quotation should also include uh, details of the retailer's bank account number, which will eventually be credited with the payments from, from the loan on behalf of the customer once the invoice is eventually uh, submitted. The invoice uh, is to include the same uh, information as the quotation, all these details as much as possible. And this is provided obviously by the retailer once the works have been carried out and the amount is actually due by the customer. So after the loan application, the, the work is carried out, the invoice is, is provided and the disbursement is carried out by the bank on behalf of customer directly to customers to retailers account. Uh, we mentioned the standardized measures. So this is uh, the list that the EIF has uh, provided as guidance uh, of the investment types that may be included under the this type of product, the BOV personal energy uh, product. Um, basically, the, the standardized measures are uh, split up under three uh, main categories. The first one is uh, related to investments re uh, related to the building envelopes, so to the exterior generally of, of the building, of the residency of, of, of the customer. There are three um, specific investment types under this category. The first one is uh, insulation under the insulation of the building, external insulation, that is products for the uh, application of the insulation to the building exterior. The second purpose is uh, the, the windows and doors. So basically here we're talking about double glazing and uh, sealants of, of, of the apertures uh, that we have in our buildings. And the third item is uh, other building envelope related measures that will impact the thermal and efficiency performance of, of the building. Uh, usually this is uh, related to external shading devices and other solar, solar control systems and passive systems. The second category of uh, standardized measures are investments related to the building system. And here we have uh, nine uh, uh, different uh, investment types which can be financed through this loan. The first one is space heating, how, how you can heat and uh, the, the internal of, of your uh, household. So it is heat generation, distribution and dispersion within the building. The second is uh, similar, but uh, it's related more to the domestic hot water, hot water generation, distribution and delivery. Then we have the ventilation system where uh, these are investments relating to heat generation and recovery equipment, the distribution of this heat and the dispersion. Fourth uh, type of investment is uh, cooling, generation, distribution, and uh, dispersion. There are obviously the, the fine, fine uh, purposes there, circuit valves, distribution controls, and it depends on the type of investment. Under the same category, then we have the lighting, uh, uh, investments which relate to efficient light uh, systems. Uh, we also have the building and energy management systems and also um, the seventh item uh, investment type is connection to energy supplies. These are investments uh, which re related to the connection to the energy grid or storage facilities. These are 
relatively the most co uh, common uh, type of investment we have. Uh, these are the PV systems and energy storage systems. Another investment type is uh, integrated renewable energy investment. Uh, that is energy from renewable sources installed within the building site. For example, you might have uh, panels that uh, generate energy from, from that renewable uh, source from the sun, so as to heat uh, um, the water of the swimming pool, for example. The, the last uh, investment type is uh, the charging station for electric vehicles. Those of us who have electric vehicles um, need uh, sometimes to, to carry out, uh, to, to set up a charging station at their premises so that they are more comfortable and um, it is more practical for them to charge their electric vehicles. And uh, so this, this purpose is eligible also under this uh, product. Obviously here we're talking only about the charging station. So, uh, the investment to, to purchase the, the, the equipment and, and the wiring and to carry out the installation as is in, in the garage. But obviously it does not cover the purchase uh, of the electric vehicle itself because that is uh, outside the scope of this uh, um, the standardized measures that uh, EIF has uh, allowed us. Obviously the electric vehicles can be financed by the BOV Ecolon then, which is also uh, a very attractive product uh, and has uh, good benefits also, but separate from this one. The third and final uh, standard and measure category is all those investments that relate to renewable energy energies not connected to buildings. So typically these are not very uh, uh, common uh, as yet in Malta, uh, but these relate to uh, PV fa farms, for example, that are operated and, and individuals can participate in, in such schemes. So this is uh, basically the last uh, type of investment allowed under the standardized measures. Um, now that we've gone through all the, the list of the investment types, uh, we, we are going through the what customer documentation is, is to be provided because sometimes the customers might, might ask you and, and it's good that you have a, an idea of what is the basic documentation required. These are not much, uh, but obviously there is the ID card that has to evidence that customer is residing in Malta, so he's a Maltese or he is an EU national residing in Malta, so the ID has to show his residency locally here. Obviously, because we need to know what the level of income the customer has, so we can uh, confirm what uh, um, amount of repayment the, the customer is eligible for and what loan amount is eligible for. So the evidence of income normally uh, comes in the form of the, the FS3, last FS3 of the customer, if he is employed and his last uh, three pay slips. Or in case uh, this is a self-employed, he has to provide the bank with the usual PNL account together with the inland revenue income and self-assessment form, which uh, he has submitted in the last uh, three years. Uh, this documentation of, of the income also uh, are, are to be used by the bank to confirm that actually the fiscal tax residency of the customer is Maltese as uh, one of the criteria uh, wants us uh, to, be, to be. As regards to the quotation, uh, as we said already, it has to evidence full details of the retailer, include all comprehensive details and, and breakdown of the goods and services which are being provided uh, to the customer in line with the allowable investment types and uh, which will eventually be financed by the law. So in, in this case, for example, um, when we say a breakdown of the goods and services, if, for example, it will be a, a, a PV system, it, it will uh, describe the, the number of units of, of the panels and, and it, its output and so on. Um, but if the customer also wants to uh, carry out investment in glazing, it, it can be included if the same retailer is providing, it can be included in the same quotation, but under different uh, uh, details, obviously. Both, both investment types must be uh, described in detail 
in the quotation. Other kind of documentation which the bank usually uh, requests when when uh, uh, evaluating uh, loan applications is to request uh, other bank statement uh, from the customer in case where the customer is banking with other than BOV. So if, if the customer only has the, the loans with BOV, uh, no other documentation is required. But if that customer has lending with other financial institutions or with uh, higher purchase companies, uh, we, we normally uh, request customer to provide the statement so that we can go through through the statement to verify that all is in order, the, the level of commitment that the customer has with, with other institutions, and that the, these facilities are being repaid uh, regularly. So um, we're, we're arriving at the end now. Uh, what are the important uh, um, reminders for to encapsulate what we have gone through uh, here? Uh, one of the most important thing, uh, for, even for you, is what what are the selling points of this product? So uh, the customer will, will reap several savings from the investment, which will be financed through the BOP personal energy loan. Uh, one, one of which will be the, that loan repayments will be relatively easy to meet due to low interest and also due to the fact that the, the long term can be extended for a longer period of 15 years. This will make the repayments uh, more accessible to, to a wider range of people and uh, will, will therefore be a, a great benefit for the customer. Also, we mentioned the benefits that no security is required from the customer and full finance can be provided um, uh, so no contribution is necessary unless there is the grant uh, element. So all, all these um, uh, make, make the, the loan more feasible, accessible for the customers, and so more people will come forward to carry out such investments. Um, we also mentioned that the, the loan cannot be used to finance investments, that are not listed in the list of standardized measures. This is important. You cannot uh, have a, a, another type of, for maybe related item, but not exactly listed in, in, in the EIF uh, standardized measures uh, list. Uh, we, we cannot put it there. It's not in our discretion or uh, it will disrupt the scheme uh, and, and uh, we cannot accept obviously other purposes which not, are not allowed. Uh, we also mentioned that the loan cannot be uh, used to finance any portion of the purchase price which the customer is obtaining as a form of grant from the government or EU. So these also we don't have any discretion. So if there is the grant amount, it has to be removed from, from the amount that can be financed uh, through the loan. And we also mentioned uh, that the loan cannot be used to finance invoices dated before the sanction letter of the loan. So it cannot uh, finance anything that is past. The loan will finance only future, um, future dated uh, investments. Some, some final considerations. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, in view that this product is being supported through the European Union, it is important that loans granted under this product are strictly opened and operated in line with the above terms and conditions and also in line with the requested uh, documentation and the professionality and the documentations provided from the retailers to the customers and uh, on, uh, upon which the EIF will carry out audits uh, regularly. In fact, the bank has onerous reporting requirements and deadlines with EIF and there are uh, data audits that, that carried out, are carried out regularly. Failure to comply would obviously result in exclusions from the portfolio and with relative consequence of forfeiting the interest subsidy for the customer and uh, impinging a, a bad uh, negative uh, implications for the bank, for, for the retailers and, and for the country in general. Uh, as you know, in, in these uh, EUS associated uh, schemes, which we need to run professionally uh, according to the rules and uh, have the full documentation in place. For the same reason, the, the retailers need to provide comprehensive and detailed quotations, invoices to their customers, who are then to forward them to the, to the bank to, uh, 
carry out the to apply for the, the loan itself. Okay, so that's uh, the the end from 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 me, and I I would like to invite you for any questions. Please feel free. Uh, sorry, I'm not hearing. Okay, um, thank That's you. Okay um, thank you, uh, Alan, for for the very interesting presentation. I think till some of, um, for those participants, you can uh, post questions on the Q and A, which is at the bottom of your screen on Zoom. For those of you who are not familiar with it, um, I have some questions I would like to ask Alan. Till till any any further questions come in, is it okay, Alan? Can I can I proceed with the questions? Yes, you can proceed with the questions. Okay, just to clarify some points uh, as the questions are coming in. Um, for measures related, for instance, to air conditioning, which is could be cooling and heating of domestic premises, what 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 criteria? I mean, if, if someone has old systems and which are and which have now there are systems with much higher efficiencies, how can this? Uh, how do you assess this? Is it is it an acceptable? investment yes it's, it's part of the cooling systems we have in our house houses so if you have an old system and you're doing away with it and uh, you're investing in new technology that is energy efficient and uh, what's not um then then it is uh, part of the cooling system investment type we have uh, mentioned so this is one of the reasons of the so it, will, it is eligible it is eligible yes um, obviously what? we we, we um, uh, we should try to uh, avoid applications for 600 euro loans. So okay, it, they have to be. We, we try to avoid sum. this. But if yeah. someone has three three units and he is spending three four thousand euros, uh, okay, uh, and even from from the retailer's point of view, maybe you can encourage the customers to upgrade uh, instead yes. of, of so, the so, smaller so ones. So this covers upgrading of facilities. Um, like yes. like you mentioned, what about yes. if someone is is building a house or a, or a putting in an apartment, um, and he wants to put in? Um, uh, we use their conditioning as an example. It could be it could be um, solar water heating, or it does this cover this kind of investment? Although yes, it's, it's a new a new premises. Yes, it, it, there is no uh, distinction between new and old. So so okay. it is uh, catering for both existing premises that are have all the equipment that needs to be replaced. And there is also the, the new homes that are being built and units that uh, are the, the owners are carrying out this kind of energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy investment in it. So in, in both cases, uh, the, the, as long as the investment type is listed in, in that list, it can be carried out. Um, uh, I would also like to mention that the bank uh, over and above the uh, personal energy loan in the coming months, uh, shortly, it will also provide um, home loan related energy loan, which uh, would probably cater for higher amounts. It, it could have a um, different interest rate, maybe it will be even finer, uh, but it, it could also require some form of collateral like all home loans do. So. Um, to be aware, the, the bank is also embarking on the next product, besides the personal product, which will uh, cover the more subst substantial investments. In both cases, both the personal energy loan and the future, the home energy loan, uh, they relate to investments carried out by individuals in, in their own residence or maybe their second home. So in, in a residence, they, it is uh, used by the customer himself and is not used for business. For example, it cannot be rented out and you, you make a business from that. So anything that the, the individual, the, the scope of this uh, uh, scheme from the, and the benefits that uh, the IF is providing is to assist the individuals to make these investments in the premises, the, the property they own and they live and enjoy themselves individually, not as a business concern. 
Thank you. So there is the personal loan and the, the home loan eventually. Then uh, as a third product, also uh, of interest to, to your uh, chamber and your members is that uh, the bank intends to provide also funding under this same scheme for SMEs. So it will be more Sorry. business related. This, this was one of the, the questions we had. This is one of the questions we have, um, which which um, you, you're you're basically answering now. So the so the bank is is planning for um, similar funds for businesses in the future as well for SMEs. Yes, in fact, the bank has already obtained a, a bucket of funds. Okay, and okay, it, it is apportioning a part of it for personal loan product. Okay. The next uh, product coming in will be the home loan related, and the third one will, will be the SME. Is there, can you give us an idea of the timeline on, on, on these? It, it, the, the intention is that the, the next in line is the home loan product, which uh, we estimate in a couple of months at, at most. So, and, and the SME, it will come later six months time span. The, so the second, second half of the year? Yes. Roughly. Roughly, okay. uh, it depends on other projects and you know, okay. and, uh, and the success of, of the would, scheme also. Would they similarly? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to one of the questions we have here. Would they similarly cover investments, for instance, in group uh, solar farms, for instance? Would, would they be of similar? That would be or? the SME uh, type of loan, and uh, we don't have uh, as yet the the set parameters there, but uh, I expect that most of these cases will be included in, in, in that there will be criteria that which are not or already you know at, at this moment so okay. uh, we, we cannot <laughs> state what will happen exactly but uh, there will be funds available and there will be subsidized interest rates and uh, great benefits even for the SMEs uh, which which do not relate to an individual house uh, that we live in but but, but commercial or, or Premise. Yes, it's it's in, in the pipeline. It's, it's um, um, one of the expected uh, purposes of, of this uh, funding, which are, we have obtained from the EIF. Okay, very good. Um, um, another question: We have a, we have an attendee who is asking, um, what will be the best process to forward customers to obtain a BOV loan? So. Um, would the retailer um, uh, put them in contact or would they, uh, where would a customer who has a potential um, uh, need for this loan, uh, how would he go about obtaining the loan? Well, the, the bank has already started uh, um, uh, an intensive marketing campaign through the uh, electronic media and other media, uh, eventually in, in the coming weeks also, uh, whereby the customer, the public in general, will be aware about this new product and we are doing this campaign, a strong campaign to instill this uh, interest in, in our products and to encourage customers to come forward and start speaking to their retailers about, about uh, what they can invest and what they want and not. So this there is that marketing campaign available. The bank's website is already updated with the product features, full product features, and there is there are the full benefits there. And so customers can be um channel to 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 go through the defined detail over there so it's another source and obviously there will be the customers that come straight away to to the retailer as usual and they say that, that we heard about the bank of Valletta loan and what do you know about it how do you know about it so the retailer can then um give an information that he has acquired up till now about the product and try to assist the customer as much as possible and also refer him to either the bank's website or the customer service center of the bank or to, to his branch of uh, preference of the customer. So, so the branch is uh, when obviously uh, the situation um, improves with regards to COVID, but they will also be available from the branches, not a specific office. Yes. Of, of the no, no, no. It will be uh, the distribution channels will be uh, the branch. Uh, irrespective of the COVID, we still um, have some branches re receive customers. So, so uh, all they have to do is to phone, pre and they are given an appointment. And, and uh, mm -hmm. we have uh, various uh, loan uh, meetings with customers already for for other products, and this will be the same uh, procedure. So, the customer ideally is uh, required requested to call the call center or his branch of preference directly, fix an appointment. 
and he is given uh, the appointment to to carry out this interview and uh, brings forward his um, and, and documentation that we need. Okay, so from the uh, if the retailer already can provide the quotation, that will be a very good start. In fact, for for the application because without the quotation from the retailer, you cannot obviously uh, you cannot uh, know what cannot is the amount, the, the, the purpose, and, and so okay. on. Um, another question, uh, which actually two questions, but they are related. Um, uh, one of our uh, attendees is asking, can a customer apply for two or more different measures, for example, air conditioning and double glazing and PVs, for instance, um, under this loan? Um, I think you mentioned if they come from the same retailer, what if they come from different retailers? Yes, so um, uh, the, the only issue limitation that there is is the 50,000 euro capping or what okay. the customer can take as a no along. So if he is that eligible the, for okay. the capping. So, so the customer has, can come with, with uh, for instance, five different quotations for different types of equipment from different retailers and they can all be covered under the same scheme, yes. the same loan arrangement. If he is doing the project as, as one whole, uh, ideally he will obtain the quotations from the different retailers and present them as, as one lot to, to, to the bank. Okay. The bank and will then assess whether he's eligible for the loan amount he's requesting and that the capping of the 50,000 is not being uh, exceeded. Exceeded, obviously, yes. Um, and, what, and you mentioned earlier that it has to be at, at the residence, uh, the, the residence of, 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 or the second house. So could the investment be spread over more than one property? Um, as yes, long sir. as they are residential properties, not being used for, for, for rental or business, if I understood correctly. Yes, yes, you understood yes, correctly. Well. Uh, okay. so, so it can be the first, uh, the, the primary residence and, and also the summer residence, uh, as long as the customer is using those, uh, those premises. premises. It's not making any business out of, because the, the customer then has to sign on the sanction letter, a clause that is certifying that the premises are used by him and not for business purposes or to generate a business income. So okay. we have to... <laughs> you have to be careful, yes. Be careful. So to avoid uh, putting any, impinging any negative uh, clouds around us. So. An interesting question here. Um, someone yeah. is asking whether the uh, finance, whether this, the loan would finance also roof gardens. Now, roof gardens, apart from the aesthetic and, and the, the pleasure of a roof garden, it also has insulation properties. Would this be um, uh, covered under insulation? Yeah, um, we have created this with the with the IAF because uh, insulation is is there available. So anything you do prior it to creating the, the garden, most of it is insulation cost. So you have to take okay. care of the roof and uh, put the insulation material there, the service and the the cost all involved there. And there is also the additional view put uh, shrubs. Uh, it will um, bring about some shading and yes, it exactly. will enhance the, the insulation of, of the roof. So what uh, our understanding is from, from feedback we have received from EIF upon our queries was that yes, but obviously uh, we have to be proportionate. So uh, if, if the project costs 10,000 euros and uh, 8,000 euros are uh, to buy a special trees and, and 1,000 euros just to make the insulation, it's, it's not on. It would be, should be the other way around. So, so most, the bulk of the project would be to carry out the insulation and material and uh, pay, pay the uh, labor for, for that work. Uh, and then if there are uh, small amounts of trees and shrubs that will further enhance that insulation and that investment, they might be considered favorably to be inc included also, but the bulk has to be for the insulation, so not to go to rock the boat. Eh? <laughs> okay, no, it's understandable, it's understandable. No, it's very interesting. Um, I believe we have exhausted all the questions here. I'm going to leave a couple of minutes, maybe someone wants to add another question. Um, I think that uh, on the whole, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, I'm an, I'm an engineer. We are involved in the, I am the chairman of the energy and efficiency the um, subcommittee of the chamber. So these things are of, of, of big interest to us. I'm glad to hear that in the future, it, they will also be available for commercial premises and possibly industrial premises as well for SMEs. 
um, there's a big drive, not only from the EU, but even locally. And our viewpoint is that it is not just a question of, it's a question of uh, creating a sustainable and pleasant uh, environment for, for ourselves in the future and for our children, because um, they stand to benefit for, from a more um, environmental friendly and um, energy efficient uh, economy. So um, I'm just checking if there are any further questions. Uh, yes. Um, so I, I have a question. If a client is interested in glazing and solar panels, can they separate the PVs and have them on an eco loan to benefit from zero interest? Yes, um, uh, the, as, as some retailers might be, be aware of, there is, the bank has other eco-loan products and a special scheme whereby some retailers uh, associated with particular uh, members of particular associations, um, uh, they, can, they, are, they are participating in a special scheme with the bank where an eco-loan is provided and the retailer is uh, providing the is, is paying uh, the interest for the customer. So that is a, a, another product that the bank will, will retain. Obviously, the bank will promote more this uh, new product because it's more of benefit to the customers in general, and it, it covers even more widespread investment. So types. the customer can split; he can get his glazing yes. on, on on. But if he wants, he can also. It's his decision. It's, it's his decision. decision. As long as the retailer agrees that. For example, the the, pen, the PV pen is is financed through the eco loan, and uh, the glazing, for example, is financed through the new loan, new personal energy loan. That's that's okay for us. So the customer will come to different quotations. One will be used for the eco special scheme, and the other one will be used for the new product. Okay. Final question, which is quite quite interesting. Um, there are, you may or may not know um, that um, every building is going to eventually have an energy performance certificate. It is currently being done on, on, on domestic and commercial buildings, which are being sold or rented. But eventually, yes, every building will have an energy performance certificate. Is there any relationship between the loan and this energy performance certificate? You may or may not know that in the energy performance certificate, there are also recommendations for energy improvements. Do, do you relate no, no. to this energy performance certificate? Or no, it's, a, it's something uh, we are aware of, obviously, about. and uh, But it is not re related to, to our scheme no or anything. No, no interaction. Obviously, uh, the purpose of uh, this uh, the BOV personal energy loan and for similar products that the bank has is to, to instigate more interest in, in such yeah. products. As, as you said, uh, it is important that we improve our environment and take care of it for, for us and for our children. So otherwise, the, there's no uh, correlation with, with it. OK, um, thank you, Alan, for a very interesting um, presentation. I think we have exhausted all the questions here. Um, Timmy, do you want to close off at this point? I'm going to pass over to you. Sure, no problem. Um, first of all, thank you. Thanks to both of you on behalf of the chamber um, for the very interesting presentation. And I think you did a great job moderating as well. Patrick, you managed Thank to you. get all the questions. Um, I'd just like to make everybody aware that uh, on the 18th of February, the chamber is also organizing an event on Brexit called Deciphering Brexit. You can find it on our website. And if you're interested, uh, just register there. Otherwise, uh, thank you. The work of the Energy Committee will, will continue and we'll be developing uh, a number of policies which we hope will be in the public domain by the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you very much and good Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye.